Hey everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about all of the books that I read in May. Before I get onto these books, I would like to direct your attention please to the description box of this video because I'm going to fill it with links. I'm going to link to resources and journals that I have been, journals? Articles in journals that I have been reading this week about the Black Lives Matter movement, about the protests going on in America and in various other places too. I am going to recommend books on the history of racism. I'm going to recommend books by Black and POC authors who are writing right now. I am going to leave links to places where you can donate. I am also going to leave link to a place where you can donate money without donating money if you don't have any money to give. But there is a video on YouTube full of ads and all of the revenue from those ads is going to different organisations who are supporting Black Lives Matter. I would also really like to draw your attention to a fundraiser that Knights Of and Jacaranda Books have been doing in the UK. They are a bookshop and a publisher who publish diverse books. I filmed a video with Jacaranda Books a few years ago, which I'll link in the description. They are an absolutely fantastic organisation. And if, if, if you can support the fundraising that they are doing at the moment, I encourage you to do so. They have already reached their target, but they're on their stretch target at the moment and they deserve they deserve the world, so please go and check them out. Recently, I've also been asked if I can recommend Black and POC booktubers, and I have replied on the various platforms where I have been asked that question, but I thought in the description of this video, I will also link some wonderful people that you can go and check out. I link them not because as a white person, I feel that they owe me any education. It is 100% my responsibility and everyone who is white's responsibility to educate themselves I link them because their channels are fantastic and because the media we consume should always be diverse. Even though I strive to read diversely as a white person, I can always do better. So please do check out all of those links in the description box down below. Either now, you don't have to listen to me talk about books, you can go and check out those links now. 100% will not be offended, even encourage you to do that. Um, but if you would like to do it after the video as well, that's fine, let's talk about books. So let me talk about the books that I read this month. Let me start with this one here, which is a tiny one, a teeny tiny one. This is Saint in Swindon by Alice Jolly and it is published by Fairlight Books. I mentioned this in a video I did recently called Books for the Moment, which was a list of books that had characters who were in isolation. So this is about a character in isolation. It's set in 2030. Climate change has progressed very far. The world is falling apart, not at the very beginning of this book, but we witness that happening very quickly. I mean, very quickly, considering <laughs> considering how short it is. This is about a husband and a wife who run a and b The wife is having an affair, but a very boring affair. We find this out at the very beginning of the book. The affair has become much like the mundanity of the rest of her life. There is no excitement. She's looking for excitement. This man comes to stay at their B&B and he refuses to leave his room. He asks or demands for all of his meals to be sent up to him. And then he starts asking for books as well because he's read all of the books that he has brought with him. So she goes to the library and takes out the books that he requests. She knows nothing about him, but she wants to find out about him. And the only way she can do that is to read the books he is reading and read between the lines, analysing him as if he is a text. And the members of her reading group all start doing this and they all start to have an idea, a fictionalised idea of what this man must be like based on the media that he consumes. Alice Jolly actually wrote this after going to visit the Swindon reading group um, and speaking to them there about what kind of stories they would all like to read. And then she tried to insert elements into this book. So this is a very meta book whereby those people are probably trying to guess what parts of their suggestions made it into the book and why, whilst the reading group in this book are trying to ascertain who this man is through the books he's reading and why. I guess, though who knows, this is probably inspired by Ali Smith's There But For There. If it's not, that's a coincidence, but I would also really recommend that book too because it is wonderful. It's about a man called Miles who locks himself in the upstairs room after a dinner party at the house of someone he doesn't know and then refuses to leave. And people start worshipping him as if he set up this whole new religion. I review books for Toast each month and this month I was reviewing Tracy Chevalier's Backlist. I've read many of her books before. Um, I've read A Single Thread and Remarkable Creatures and reviewed both of those on this channel. 
I'll link those reviews down below. Um, I read her book, Girl with a Pearl Earring and also The Lady and the Unicorn, when I was in St. Ives, when I was about 16, 17. They were in the flat of the place that we were renting and I had run out of books to read, much like the man who went to stay at the Airbnb, though I did actually leave my room in St. Ives. Um, so I read them and they're the first books I remember reading outside of school that were books for grown-ups and I absolutely loved them. And she always seems to have crept up in my life when I need her most. And I spoke about that in the article that I wrote, so I won't speak about that here too. If you would like to read about that, I'll link it in the description box down below. Um, but this month I read The Virgin Blue, which is her debut book. And you can tell that this is her debut novel. And I mean that with um, a sense of love. Um, and it's really interesting to see how she has evolved as a writer since then. I did a online talk with Tracy to link with that article and she talked about writing this book and how it was the first time she had written historical fiction but also linked it with the present day and she just didn't like doing that anymore because people read her as the person that she was writing about in the present and she said that in historical fiction that doesn't tend to happen so she escaped into the distant past in future books so that she could disappear as the author more and I thought that was really fascinating. This book reminded me a little bit of um, Tell for the Time Being which will have been written after, I don't think that they're inspired by, by each other but it has that almost magical realist link between the past and present two characters who feel very much connected and can imagine the other person in various different scenarios in a very vivid vivid way this is about the color blue it's about pregnancy it is about women's bodies it is set during the protestant revolution in france and also the modern day experience of an american woman coming to france with her husband feeling lost and then researching her heritage i also read falling angels which is her third book so after that book she wrote Girl with a Pearl Earring. She actually wrote a version of this first or a book at least that was set in Highgate Cemetery in North London but she set it in the present day, didn't think it worked, went away to write Girl with a Pearl Earring then came back to Highgate Cemetery. So she was a volunteer tour guide there for a while and there are so many fascinating things um, going on in that cemetery. It is an absolutely bizarre place and it has inspired many different novels such as The Graveyard Book and Audrey Nifigena's book which I have forgotten the, na the name of in this moment. I will insert a picture of the cover here. Um, it's inspired lots of different books and lots of different authors have been volunteer tour guides there. So she learned about the past of Highgate Cemetery and she decided to write a book about it. It's set in the early 1900s and it's about two families who live opposite each other, but who are very different and are united through the friendship that grows between their two daughters, Maud and Lavinia. Lavinia is very concerned with what everybody thinks. She's very concerned with etiquette and she is obsessed with funeral rituals because there are so many at that time. It's the time when Albert died and uh, Queen Victoria was in mourning for the rest of her life but that's starting to change when this book opens um, she's clinging to the old ways it's also about the suffragettes as well um, there are lots of different things in here and it darts between lots of different characters it moves very very swiftly when I included this in a haul recently lots of people said that they loved it and had been emotionally destroyed by it which I completely understand um, I think it's if I had to rank Tracy Chevalier books, which I feel is a mean thing to do. I think A Single Thread and Remarkable Creatures would be my favourites, but this is definitely tucked in under those. Um, so I will link my review for Toast that I wrote this month. Um, if, no, that's the wrong book. If you uh, comment under that article and talk to me, you can be entered into a giveaway to win a copy of Girl with a Pearl Earring. And I'll also link the talk that I did with Tracy Chevalier as well. It's like coming to an author talk in a bookshop, but you do not have to leave your house. The next book that I read in May was Tana Hesse Coates' Between the World and Me. This has been sitting on my five-star prediction pile and it is a five-star book. It is wonderful. It is a letter that he wrote to his 15-year-old son about his experience of growing up as a black man in America. He talks about not just the trauma that he has experienced firsthand and that he has witnessed, but also inherited trauma um, and how he has pieced that together himself. He talks about how race has become a human construct. 
a real one because it has been constructed so much, but because when you create a construct like that, the child of that is then racism. But because you've created the father, the mother of this thing called racism, it can be discarded as an inevitable byproduct rather than actually questioning what that is and why. He gave a very good example of this. In this way, racism is rendered as the innocent daughter of mother nature, and one is left to deplore the middle passage or the trail of tears the way one deplores an earthquake, a tornado, or any other phenomenon that can be cast as beyond the handiwork of men. He talks about dreams as distractions. He talks about going to the library and discovering bodies of texts that speak to him in a way that enables him to pull together parts of his own body, body that society wants to take away from him. Um, it's incredible. I would recommend it so much if you haven't read it yet. This is focused on the history of racism and present day racism in the States. If you want books specifically about the UK, I would recommend Why I'm No Longer talking to white people about race and I would also recommend British as well. After finishing Between the World and Me, I also reread two of my favourite poetry books in May. I reread The Perseverance by Raymond Antrobus and I reread Don't Call Us Dead by Denise Smith. I was giving away copies of these on Instagram to people who were donating to certain funds. In fact, Denise themselves, they are accepting money via various different platforms. I will link their Instagram down below. They're on the ground in Minneapolis and are distributing funds to where they are most needed. So go and check that out if you can. And um, I've spoken about both of these books at length on this channel before. So I will just say, if you haven't read them, please go read them. Denise's book is about growing up as a black genderqueer person in the States, talking about racism, talking about being HIV positive, talking about friendships and love and loss. Ray is a British Jamaican poet in The Perseverance. He's talking about his relationship with his father and also talking about the death experience. His poem, Two Guns in the Sky for Daniel Harris is one of my favorite poems ever. He also recently made a video of that. I will insert an image of that here and I will link that in the description box down below. I have also done podcasts with both Ray and Inez in the past. I will link those in the description box down below too. So four other books that I read this month, well three really because I DNF'd one of them. Um, in my most recent reading vlog I said, and I sound like a broken record at this point, I am trying to find a series of books that I love as much as the Frida Klein series by Nikki French. Did you know that? Goodness. Um, so I picked up some more Nikki French books and I also bought some books that had been recommended to me. So the first one was Fiona Cummins' The Neighbour. This is the one that I DNF'd. The writing style wasn't quite to my taste. Um, there were quite obvious things in it that were teased out that I was getting frustrated with. It also, I felt, was trying to use quite elevated language to justify the quick paced nature of the book when I didn't really feel it needed that. It felt a bit forced. Um, also, we're introduced to the murderer as a speaker um, who's speaking quite often in this book and the murderer has this figment and I just, as you know, do not have time. Do not have time for that. So I said no thank you to that book and I'm sure other people will like it. I found out afterwards that because um, I was speaking to Jean and she said that one of the other books this author has written is about a murderer who collects the body parts of people who have disfigurement. So this seems to be a thing. Um, if you're new, I have thoughts on the representation of disfigurement as someone who has disfigurements themselves. I'll link my playlist down below because that's a whole other, a whole other thing. You can dive into that if you would like to. I also read The Crossing Places, which is the first in the Dr. Ruth Galloway detective series. She is a forensic archeologist, so she's not actually a detective, but she gets called into this case because they have found a site which may be a murder site or it may be the remains of an Iron Age burial. And she has to give them her expertise and then she gets tied up in the disappearance of these two children. It has themes in that I'm really drawn to. It is set on the Norfolk coast. It is about myth and folklore. Um, it is about Norse mythology. It has so many things in that I love. Um, however, I did guess who the murderer was um, the first time that we met them. And it's always a bit of a disappointment, even though you feel slightly smug at having guessed it, uh, it is a bit of a disappointment because you want to be surprised. So I wasn't surprised. I also got very frustrated with this book, which I spoke about in the reading vlog. The main character, Ruth, is very self-conscious about her weight and she berates herself for it all the time. 
I understand, whilst I want her to love herself, that we don't always love ourselves because society makes us feel bad about stuff. I also understand that other people judge us based on the way that we look. As someone with a disfigurement, I'm not the person who needs to learn the lesson about how we don't always love our bodies and how other people don't always love our bodies either. Trust me, not a lesson that I need to learn. So I'm also, whilst not okay, I understand, can get on board with other characters in the book being not so great and judgmental because that's what people are like and that is life. However, this is where the however comes in. The narrator also got involved in this. The narrator also put judgments on her. The narrator also said things that didn't feel like they were things she was telling herself. They didn't feel like judgments from other people. They were this other person who was making these judgments. And that's a whole different thing. It's just, it, yeah. So that really, really frustrated me and took me out of the story a lot. I will say that in the second half, there was much, much less of it. Um, but when I looked up other reviews once I'd finished it, lots of other people had said that they found this book very fat phobic and that this commentary continues throughout the whole of the series, which is a real shame because there are elements of this book that I really did enjoy. But I, I don't think I'm gonna be rushing to pick up the next one at the moment. I also read another Nikki French. This is The Memory Game. This is about a woman called Jane who has a huge extended family, mainly through her husband, who she's in the process of divorcing. She used to date her husband's brother. She was best friends with her husband's sister who died when they were all young, or at least may have run away. They think she died. And at the beginning of this book, 25 years later, they find her body. It turns out that she was pregnant too. In this, Jane is trying to uncover her own memories about the summer when her friend was killed because she thinks that maybe she saw something and has suppressed it. This is all about constructing things, constructing houses, constructing or reconstructing memories, constructing films because her brother wants to make a film about the family um, and also about just building narratives to comfort yourself and to try and explain trauma that you have been through. The discussion on trauma in this book is fantastic. I really respect actually the way that Nikki French does talk about trauma and the way that they also talk about um, psychotherapy because there's a lot of discussion of psychotherapy in here. This book is slightly ridiculous. Um, there are characters in here that do things that aren't that linear and time seems to warp. You know, months will jump and we're not really given context for what has happened in those months. Um, and there are inaccuracies in chapters. There's one character at the beginning of the chapter, it's a huge point is made about how she's not wearing any makeup. But then at the end of that chapter, when she hasn't left the screen or the page, another character kisses her and suddenly she's got lipstick all over her face, um, her own lipstick but she wasn't wearing any. Um, Jane also sees someone on the TV and she thinks, I like his point of view. So she immediately writes him a letter and walks to the post office to post it. And I was thinking, where are you sending this to? <laughs> like, where did you get their address? You don't just see someone on TV. Like, she didn't send it to the program he was on. She sent it to his address. Um, I was just thinking, how did you get that address? I don't understand. How do we join these dots? I don't get it. So there were various things like that that made me laugh because they were a bit clumsy, but I kind of forgive it. I enjoyed the ride. <laughs> Finally, I read this graphic novel here, which is called Bluebeard, a feminist fairy tale by Metafrog. This is not actually that different to the Bluebeard fairy tale. It's as feminist retellings go. I think this could have been pushed further, but I did like the little twist in it. Um, I am quite obsessed with the history of fairy tales. If you're new, I have a whole series on the history of fairy tales, including an episode dedicated to Bluebeard. So I'll link that video in the description box down below. My friend Michelle sent this to me because he thought that I would like it. We filmed the video together six, six years ago, which is ridiculous now I think about it. Time, what is time? Yes, we filmed the video six years ago. Um, where we were talking about the book of Strange New Things because it had just come out. Um, and that was the first time that we'd met, but we've stayed in touch since. And he sent me this because he knows that I love fairy tales. Um, the text in this, I don't think is its strongest point, but the artwork is beautiful. The color tones in it are also stunning. Let me do a cutaway so that you can see all of the beautiful colors. I would particularly recommend this for younger readers. And if you like the artwork, I would definitely buy it for that. 
So those are all the books that I read in May. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, please check out all of the links in the description box down below. If you have any other creators or links that you would like to share in the comment section, please do that because I would love to see those. I will be back with another video soon. Sending lots of love to you all.